when I was younger, I didn't really believe that mental health problems were such a big deal. People who could be watching me right now could say that I'm being overdramatic. Because literally, I'm just saying that I hate myself. But they can't feel it. They can't feel that I hate myself. Fuck, I'm not gonna do something... I'm not gonna, like, do some act that shows that I hate myself. I don't want to show that I hate myself. I mean, you know, those people just have to, um, they have to take what they see right now. And they don't see me, they don't, they can't feel me, you know. They might think that I'm making this up. And I don't know. Maybe I am. That's what I thought. That's what I thought for, I think, a good 10 years of my life. Um, all the way from elementary, I just thought people can be happy if they tried, you know. You say you hate yourself? Well then, it's not like it's the end of the world. You can move on from it easily. You don't have to deal with it. Just just keep keep going. Keep working. Keep keep being happy. Keep working hard. You know in school I used to People might think this is admirable, which is, I know some people who might think this is admirable, which if you do, your, your mind is fucking messed up. I used to cover up my mental problems and avoid dealing with them through working. And I got good grades, but with those good grades, I started becoming perfectionistic I started having anxiety I started becoming insecure and using a superficial score of numbers to determine how valuable of a person I am I determined my value as a human being through a set of numbers, percentages, on a test. That's what I meant. What if I graded you as... as a 30 out of 50? What if I graded you like that? How would you feel? Now, what if I graded you a 45 out of 50? You would feel better, would you? The question is, though, are you really defined by a set of numbers? Does that set of numbers say anything about what you've been through? Regardless of 30 of 50 or 45 out of 50, does it tell you how good of a person you are? Like, how kind you are? How honest you are? No. Grades are not the whole story. And yeah, I got good grades, but fuck, it messed me up. 
and I got perfectionistic. I wanted perfect grades. And yes, perfectionism is is very close. I don't know if it's classified as a mental disorder, but it's very close to one, and I will prove it to you. This sheet is from my university psychologist. University psychologist. Educated people gave me this sheet. Perfectionism. And here it lists all the symptoms. And there's more. Yeah. You know, if you're suffering with perfectionism, I can give you the link to the sheet in the description. I think it's very good. Um, mental disorders. When someone says they're mentally fucked up, it might not be a joke. You might not see that it's happening, but, you know, maybe talk to them first before you make any assumptions. People say, people who say that I'm overacting. Because I used to be one of you, and look how I turned out. I'm making this video <laughs> and embarrassing myself on YouTube. <sighs> I don't look very good right now. Um, on camera, sorry. Um. I also suffered from depression in university. Depression happened when I was alone. Oh, shit. <laughs> depression is easier than you think you just need the right environment for it this is my message to people say to people who say that um like to people that deny other people who have depression. Depression can affect everyone. I learned that in my psychology lecture in university. It can affect anyone. It can affect certain types of people more than others, but those certain types of people just have to be in the right circumstances. Turns out, university is a very good place to get depression. Okay. Here's how you get depression in university. Step one. Feel like life is hopeless. Like everything you do is hopeless. In university, you're given lots of work. University is hard. Most people my age, and I think 20 year olds, they are not even in university. Most people. That's actually statistically accurate. Most people my age. And I'm sorry, I learned this in a sociology lecture. I'm just gonna keep referencing lectures. Um, cause I wanna, I want to put it out there that this is true. University is fucking hard. They give you so much work. Um, and you have to juggle that work, which is textbook writing, lecture writing, for, I think this is for a good six months, um, five days a week. Um, textbook writing, lecture writing, homework... Um, 
sometimes people do like internships they have to have part-time jobs to get money to pay off thousands of dollars of debt you know it's a lot of work for your education and it's very easy to feel you know in the middle of the semester like you can't do it all and it's very easy to feel like it's hopeless all the time every day every single day of university is a reminder that it's hard and it's fucking excruciating yeah it's fucking excruciating to even think about <laughs> I'm doing it right now I'm supposed to be doing it procrastinating okay anyway second you don't have a good support system now that can vary for me I do have a good support system that I um, could talk about my depression with however what I chose to do because I worked I worked um, a lot <laughs> I had to I had to study a lot like everyone does in university you tend to isolate yourself from your support system you isolate yourself from your friends you isolate yourself from your family and just a reminder are you doing this oh I would I did this every day for six months well every weekday for six months you isolate I isolated myself I only got to see my friends I think once a week and I think I was so good at isolating myself like, okay once a week is optimal but I was so good at isolating myself that I only saw my friends like twice a month so um that's one way you ruin your support system another way is if you just don't have friends and you've been raised in a bad family and they kind of don't want to help you or you're raised in a good family but your parents just don't understand like my parents that's one of my situation um as well A third way that depression can manifest, at least for me, is that you feel like this sense of hopelessness, this worthlessness that you have, is permanent and that it can never be solved. So you, tr you do nothing about it. You figure that it's always going to be that you suck, you suck, you suck. You're worthless, you're worthless, worthless. It's always going to be that way. And I feel like the first and second factors really play into creating the third one, especially university as an environment, a working environment, work, 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 work all the time. 
And the thing is, is that when you work in university, you're not earning money for your work. So there's that. You might not feel much reward from it. Not immediately, anyways. That sort of separates it from a job. Although, I know in work environments, depression is not that hard to get either. Depends on what your work is. Yeah. You're paying thousands of dollars to write notes, write more notes, do homework, write notes, write more notes, do homework, midterm, write notes, write notes, homework, write notes, write notes, homework, write notes, write notes, homework, then final exam. And then you do it all over again for four years. Oh yeah, I said six months. That's only a semester. Um, it's for university. Like, if you're taking a bachelor's, it's four years. It's no f fucking joke. That if you are not finding s at least some, not seeing some fulfillment in what you're studying in university. And you can fall into depression super fast. It's like, yeah, you don't even expect. I never thought I could get depression. It just happened. And when it does, it's so hard to get out of.